Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Part 3 of explaining every single note within Godot. I still haven't lost my sanity, and today we're gonna cover every single 2D note. We're gonna do them all in one video, so grab a snack and come with me as we explore every single 2D note within Godot. I'm gonna be using this tileset and this player character as our examples for today. Links to the downloads will be in the description. Please support the artists if you'll ever use them. And let's get into it. The Note 2D. The Note 2D is the basis of all 2D notes. It keeps track of rotation, position and scale. All the notes we're going to cover today inherit from the Note 2D. The Camera 2D. The Camera 2D note specifies the points from which your scene is viewed. It's very simple. It contains some parameters for rotation and position and making your camera movement more easy on the eyes by setting up camera drag and smoothing. The Animated Sprite 2D and the Sprite 2D. The Sprite 2D and the Animated Sprite 2D are used to render 2D textures to the screen. The texture displayed can be the region of a larger texture atlas. And the Animated Sprite 2D contains a great tool for setting up sprite sheet animations. The Collision Object 2D. The Collision Object 2D cannot be used standalone, but it serves as a base class for all 2D objects that have collisions. It has properties for its collision layer and whether it's enabled or not. The Physics Body 2D. The Physics Body 2D can also not be used standalone, but serves as a base class for all 2D objects that are affected by physics. The Collision Shape and the Collision Polygon 2D. The following notes we're about to cover all require a collision shape. The collision shape will need to be a child of the physics body and you can set your collision shape within the expector here. The Static Body 2D. The Static Body 2D is a physics body that cannot be moved. However, other physics bodies can be affected by it. It can be used for things like walls, floors or ceilings. And if you decide to move a static body, it doesn't push any other physics bodies, but instead teleports to the new location. The Animatable Body 2D. The animatable body 2D is almost the same as a static physics body, only this physics body can be moved. It's still not affected by gravity or other physics bodies, but if you move it in code or an animation, the other physics bodies in its way will be pushed appropriately. The rigid body 2D. The rigid body 2D is the physics body that is affected by other physics bodies and gravity. This is the physics body used for all your physics items that can be moved and are not directly controlled by the player. The character body 2D. The Character Body 2D is a specialized physics body that is meant to be controlled by the player. It contains built-in functionality for precise movement controlling with code within the physics simulation. The Joint 2D. The Joint 2D cannot be used standalone, but it's a base class for all 2D physics joints. These are nodes that connect two physics bodies together, and Godot contains the following 2D joints. The Dampened Spring Joint 2D. The Dampened Spring Joint 2D connects two physics bodies together in a spring-like manner. It contains parameters for the spring's length, stiffness, and dampening. The Groove Joint 2D. The Groove Joint 2D has a bit of a confusing name, but it connects two physics bodies together like a piston, meaning they can only retract and extend in one movement axis. And finally, the Pin Joint 2D. The Pin Joint 2D can be used to pin two physics bodies together. They're basically connected at one point and are allowed to freely rotate in any direction. The Area 2D. The Area 2D acts as two things. One, a detection field that checks whether collision objects leave or enter it and two, an area of space with its own physics and audio settings. You can change things like gravity, wind, audio channels, and this allows you to create things like underwater areas or zero gravity areas within your game. The Audio Listener 2D. By default, the camera will be the point that listens to 2D audio, but if you want to hear your scene from a different location, you can use this node to set up a listening point. The Audio Stream Player 2D. This is the 2D audio source of Godot. It can be used to play audio from a certain point in space, and it has all the audio settings that you would expect. Volume, Pitch, Range, Attenuation. The CPU Particle 2D and the GPU Particle 2D. These are the 2D particle systems of Godot. A lot of fun and cool particle systems can be built here. There are so many parameters, way too much to explain here, but I find that particle systems are quite straightforward. I would say a good way to learn them is just to add one to your scene and start playing with the parameters. The Tile Map. The Tile Map node is a huge node, way too big to explain here. It is used to build 2D tile maps. It has a great built-in tool for painting your tile maps and setting up tile sets. Condell also contains functionality to adding physics layers, navigation layers to your tile map. Again, a lot of awesome functionality here. I'll leave a link to the Godot docs that contains a lot of great tutorials. Now let's talk about 2D lighting in Godot. The Canvas Modulate node. The Canvas Modulate node is needed to set up 2D shadows in your scene. It first darkens your scene so that 2D lights can light it back up again. The Light 2D node. The Light 2D node cannot be used standalone, but it's the base class for all 2D lights. It has settings for light color, energy, and its blend mode. The Point Light 2D. The Point Light is used to light up a scene from one specific point. You do, however, need to give it a texture. This is the way the light looks. 
it's not a point as in there's a single point in the center that emits light to all directions, but instead it's this texture that lights up your scene. So why is it called a point light and not a texture light? This is because it casts shadows from its center. So lighting is done with the texture and the shadow casting is done from the point. The directional light 2D. The directional light 2D is used to light up an entire scene at once. It is used for things like the sun and the moon, and the directional light 2D shines from one angle and does not warp shadows based on its distance like a point light. The light occluder 2D. The light occluder 2D is the shape that is used to cast a shadow in your scene. You can set up the shape of a certain object, and based on this it will cast shadows in the rest of the scene. The line 2D. The line 2D node does what it says on the tin. It allows you to draw 2D lines by adding points to this array. It has a lot of properties for styling the line, like setting up its width, taper, and how the corners of the lines are rounded and rendered. The marker 2D. The marker 2D node is a debugging node. It's just a node 2D, only it shows its position and rotation in the editor. It can be used to keep track of invisible nodes or points in space. The mesh instance 2D. The mesh instance 2D node can be used to render a mesh, aka a 3D model, in 2D. It has properties for what mesh it renders and its material. The multi-mesh instance 2D. The multi-mesh instance 2D can be used to render a lot of meshes efficiently. It is recommended to be used with a lot of meshes in close proximity. Think for example a field of grass. The navigation region 2D, the navigation link 2D and the navigation obstacle 2D. These are nodes to set up pathfinding in 2D. They are a bit more complicated than the 3D navfinding nodes as you'll need to set up your own navigation regions manually. While in 3D there's a tool for automatically generating your nav mesh. There's a great read in the docs on how to set up navfinding in 2D and I'll leave a link in the description. The parallax layer and the parallax background node. The parallax layer and the parallax background node are used to set up parallaxing backgrounds in a 2D scene. Any 2D graphics can be used as long as they're a child of its appropriate parallaxing layer. The path 2D and the path follow 2D. The path 2D node and the path follow 2D node are used to set up a 2D path or curve and then bind another node to this path using the path follow 2D node. The polygon 2D. The polygon 2D node allows you to set up shapes in 2D. You can add the points of the polygon into the array here or drag and drop them in the editor right here. The raycast 2D. The raycast 2D node can be used to check collisions in a straight line. The node reports on whether it hit something, the point of collision and what it collided with. The shapecast 2D. The shapecast 2D works exactly the same as the raycast 2D, only it checks for collision in a line using a shape. So where a raycast would shoot out an infinitely thin line, the shapecast would shoot out in a shape, for example a rectangle or a circle. The remote transform 2D. The remote transform 2D node can set another node's transform to its own. It basically acts as a parent to that node without actually being the parent in the hierarchy. It contains properties for whether to affect the position, rotation or scale or all of them. The skeleton 2D, the bone 2D and the physical bone 2D. These nodes are all used to set up 2D skeleton and 2D skeletal animations. There is some third-party software to set up these skeletons, but Godot also allows you to build your own skeletons within Godot. There's a lot that goes into building and managing your 2D skeletons. The docs have a great read on the whole process. Link in the description. The visible on-screen notifier 2D and the visible on-screen enabler 2D. These nodes are used to detect whether a visual is on-screen or not. The visual on-screen notifier sends out a signal to code when it is on-screen, and the visible on-screen enabler 2D enables itself when it is visible. The canvas group. The canvas group node can be used to merge all its children into a single draw call. This can be useful when you want to combine some textures into one, for example a translucent bottle and its contents. And finally the back buffer copy. The back buffer copy node is used to capture a region of your screen or your whole screen to be used in shaders. You can define what part of the screen it captures and this texture can be accessed within your shader script with the hint underscore screen underscore texture variable. All right, all right, all right. There were all the 2D notes. Some of you might have noticed that I left out the touchscreen button. That one is going into all the UI notes. I'm doing all the UI and window notes in the next video. And that should cover everything. And then I'll put them all together in one giant video. And we'll have the every note covered in one video. Uh, yeah, thanks for all the support on the series so far. It's been a lot of fun to do. A lot of fun to hear your reactions. So subscribe if you want to see the next one. And until then, bye.